Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. This is Beyond the Lines. I'm Rusty Komori. We broadcast live on Mondays at 10 a.m. from the Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This TV show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, which is about having a constant striving for excellence, achieving and sustaining success, leadership, and finding greatness. My special guest today is Governor David Ige. He is a very successful leader with great character, and we will be going in depth with him on a variety of topics. Today, we are going beyond politics. Governor, great having you here today. Aloha, thank you so much for the invitation. Is it true that your father uh, fought in World War II and received the Purple Heart and the Bronze Star? Yes, you know, uh, my father was a member of the 100th Battalion, 442nd. He fought uh, in the war, but you know, like so many of his colleagues, he never really talked about it. I learned what he did really after he passed away, which was really sad, but he did uh, earn a Purple Heart. Um, in fact, he used to say that October 29th was his special lucky day, and I never understood what or why until he passed away. But um, he earned his Purple Heart in the battle for the Lost Battalion when they were making that final push to rescue um, the, those Texas soldiers, uh, and he was injured. And he considered it his lucky day because he felt like there were so many people who died in that battle and who were really hurt even worse than he was. Wow, wow, what a special honor. And it sounds like he's a, he was an amazing man. You know, he, he definitely taught me about leadership in a different way. He was quiet, but it really was about living your values, you know, walking the talk and making sure that uh, what you said is what you did. Yeah. Now, you grew up in Pearl City. Yes. How was it growing up in Pearl City? You know, our family moved to Pearl City in the first increment above uh, Kamehameha Highway. So Pearl City was a very small community. I would literally visit every single home on Halloween. It was like <laughs> 50 or 60 people. So it really uh, was the beginning of um, of urban life all across the state. And, you know, it was a great time to be a kid. You know, there were 45 kids that grew up in the block and we would be playing football on the street, awesome. baseball, just a lot of different crazy things. I remember those days. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now you went to school, schools in Pearl City as well? Yes, I, uh, I went to Pearl City Elementary School and Highlands Intermediate and uh, as my freshman year, Pearl City High School opened brand new. You know, I have uh, five brothers and all of my oldest brothers went to Waipauhu High School and then Pearl City opened my freshman year. I have to ask you, Governor, do you play tennis at all? I do play tennis. You do? <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, and I, uh, you know, Pearl City is known as the baseball capital of, yeah. uh, of, of the state. Yeah. And I played baseball. But in my freshman year at Pearl City, uh, I went out for the baseball team for the next year. And there were 45, you know, 50 people out for the team. Wow. It didn't take a rocket scientist for me to figure out that I wasn't going to make the team. Uh, and sign-ups for tennis was on the same day. And nobody was signing up for tennis. So I, I just signed up. Wow, that's amazing. A, a bunch of friends of I and, you know, and we became the Pro City High School tennis team. Wow, what a, what a great situation. I think you and I should play doubles together. We'd be a tough team to beat. <laughs> I haven't played tennis in a long, long, long time. I, I would need at least six six months to get back <laughs> into the shape and the rhythm. I'll help you. <laughs> okay. Now, you, you got accepted into MIT, which is one of the top schools in the country, and you also got accepted to University of Hawaii, and you chose UH. Why? Well, you know, my uh, you know my parents really believed in education, and they said that education was really the key to a better life. My two older brothers had gone away, uh, and my oldest brother went to Pro Purdue University, and. Um, 
my second oldest brother went to Illinois Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. So I had applied to a, a number of places, but I'm fifth of six. Wow. So, you know, a couple things. I, I couldn't see asking my parents to pay. I mean, it's very expensive comparing, compared to the University sure. of Hawaii. And the second thing is I have a younger brother, and I knew that my decision would impact his. And if I decided to go away, I know that my parents would have made it happen, but then my brother would have fewer choices. And so my plan was, yeah, and I thought the University of Hawaii had a great engineering program. You know, they had just opened a brand new um, building uh, on the campus, and it was an exciting time to be an engineering student at the University of Hawaii as well. So I chose to stay home. Awesome. Now, family is extremely important to you. Can you tell me about your wife and kids? You know, sure. I'm uh, proud, you know, I met Don at um, University of Hawaii at Manoa when Great. we were students there, and uh, we just celebrated our 36th anniversary uh, last Congratulations. week. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, and um, I, we have three children. I'm really proud of everything that they do. My oldest daughter, Lauren, is an attorney. She uh, works in Washington, D.C for Wilmer and Hale. Awesome. Um, my middle daughter, Amy, got married last December great. Uh, to a Navy pilot. Uh, Anthony uh, is a great son-in-law. Uh, and she's a registered nurse, and she works uh, in Mount Vernon in the Seattle area of Washington State. You know, and my, my son, Matthew, is a software engineer. He uh, works at Microsoft wow. uh, in Seattle, and you know, they, make me proud every single day. I'm sure. Now, I want to ask you, Governor, what was the first job you ever had? <laughs> My uh, very first job uh, was working at the pineapple ca cannery. Really? Del, Del Monte Pineapple Cannery. Uh, I was a member of the union, ILWU, and I uh, trimmed pineapples. I, I tell people, and I told Prime Minister Abe, I'm a professional pineapple <laughs> trimmer. Awesome. I want to know, Governor, how did how did you get into politics? How did your political career begin? You know, I uh, I'm an engineer by profession. I was uh, working at Hawaiian Telephone, and actually, my goal and objective uh, at Hawaiian Telephone uh, was to be the first local president. I had uh, been promoted uh, three times in four years, you know, and I thought that I was on the fast track. Literally in one day, a high school friend called me and said, would you be interested in politics? And from 7.30 in the morning, I met the chairman of the Democratic Party. We talked about it. I met the governor. Um, and next thing I knew, I was appointed to a vacancy in the House of Representatives, uh, literally in one day. Wow, that, well, that's quick. You know, yeah. I, I had no idea about that. No, and I, you know, and I, that's a hour-long story. But <laughs> you know, it. Um, I when I met with the governor, he talked about his desire to get younger people involved in public service. Uh, and he felt that he really were looking for people who would choose not to get involved, uh, but might uh, if given a, a chance. And so, you know, it really was an uh, opportunity uh, to uh, do, do more than I could as an engineer. Great. What, what is it about politics that you like? Well, I would say public service rather than politics. You know, the campaigning is always the tough part that people don't like. Sure. I like public service because it's the opportunity uh, to make a difference in a community. You know, I'm, I'm excited to be governor uh, because each and every day I have uh, opportunity to um, make a difference for all of the people in Hawaii. Yeah. When I was head coach for the Punahou School boys varsity tennis team, my top priority was to develop champion athletes of character first, and then great tennis players second. <laughs> what character traits do you have as a leader? You know, I'm a collaborator. I, I believe, and you know, especially in public service, you know, no one can do anything by themselves. It really is about assembling a great team. Uh, and really empowering them, challenging them to be leaders, uh, and then you know being focused on uh, doing the right things, uh, having a clear vision, uh, and then challenging them to execute. Great. Now, Governor, you 
you ran the uh, Great Aloha Run. You you ran in it and you survived it. <laughs> yes. How was that experience in the Great Aloha Run for you? Well, you know, I I took up running because I wanted to. I couldn't play tennis anymore, <laughs> uh, and I really wanted to keep active. So I started running, and uh, you know, Carol Kai is a great friend, and she challenged us to. Uh, to to run the Great Aloha Run now. You know, that's a lot, a lot longer than uh, <laughs> most people think. But you know, it keeps me active. I enjoy running because it allows me to, to have some time by myself. It gets the heart and, and blood flowing. Yeah. Uh, and it really clears my head and gives me the opportunity to really think about challenging issues. And you know, I come up with my best ideas for <laughs> solutions. Now, the, a lot of Japanese people love to run in the Great Aloha Run and the Honolulu Marathon. And Absolutely. The Japan-Hawaii connection is extremely important. How is your relationship with Prime Minister Shinzo Abe? You know, I am honored that um, I've had the privilege of meeting with Prime Minister Abe on a number of occasions, actually three or four times. Uh, you know, and I think he recognizes that uh, the U.S.-Japan relationship is fundamentally important uh, for the world in uh, world peace in the Asia Pacific region. And I know he understands that uh, it's a special relationship between Japan and Hawaii. You know, it's more than business, it's more than friendship. It is about family, and you know, like I have relatives who still live in Okinawa today, and many of us uh, trace our ancestry and our roots back to Japan. So uh, we know that it's in, important for both um, prosperity of Japan as well as the prosperity of Hawaii that we have a very close and dynamic relationship. Here's a question for you, Governor. What have you learned about yourself through the years that affect your decision making today? You know, I really believe uh, it's a couple things. One is is being open and honest in, in my communication so people know what I'm thinking. Uh, but I think more importantly, it's about getting uh, input and perspectives from as many people and stakeholders on any issue um, because it allows you to examine um, what would be most successful. And I think uh, finding the best solution is really about working with people and hearing their views and then uh, making the decision to do the right thing in the right way for the right reasons. You have a great connection with the people of Hawaii. I mean, when you talk with them, I mean, you're very in touch with the needs of the Hawaii people. Can you tell me more about what you like about being governor at the moment? You know, I do like being governor because it gives you the chance to make a difference every day. You know, uh, we've been uh, out and meeting with the community. I challenge my directors to engage uh, the public uh, and make them part of the solution. You know, we've had, I've had personally town meetings uh, across the state. <clears throat> It really gives the public the opportunity to ask questions and I can hear about their concerns and the things that uh, they're most um, focused on. Uh, and you know, some of the best ideas come from the general public and uh, you know, if it works and we can do it, we implement. For sure, sounds good. Governor, we're going to um, take a quick break and when we return, we're going to keep going beyond politics with you. Thank you. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Governor David Ige. We will be back in a quick minute. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff, but I really like energy stuff, so I'm gonna keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're gonna talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're gonna definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here 
on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons, and then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up, and please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. If you are just joining us, my special guest today is Governor David Ige, and we are going beyond politics. Governor, I want to ask you, what sets you apart from your opponent in your re-election campaign for governor? You know, I'm not a lawyer. I'm an engineer. Uh, engineers are about engaging the public, working with stakeholders, uh, and finding the best solution to, to serve the public, and then most importantly, getting it done. You know, I have a, a proud record of accomplishments in uh, the environment, in improving public education, and about fighting to reduce the cost of higher education, um, increasing uh, the challenge of homelessness. And, you know, for the first time, we've had a reduction in the homeless count for two consecutive years. That's great. You know, it's really about um, identifying things that work and getting it done. Now, you have great empathy for the military. In fact, you often go to those deployment ceremonies that they have. Why do you hold the military in such high esteem? You know, as you know, my father is a veteran, and I've interacted with many veterans and veteran organizations all across the state. You know, the price of freedom is not free, and it really is those who volunteer and serve in our military that really allows all of us in America to enjoy the rights of pri and privileges of being an American. You know, I'm the commander-in-chief of the Hawaii National Guard, and yeah. I take my responsibility seriously, and I really do appreciate the fact that uh, those in the military are willing to put their life on the line to protect and ensure that each and every one of us here in Hawaii and across the country uh, have their rights and privileges protected. Now, you've signed a number of important bills, um, and can you, sh I mean, there's a, a lot of important bills that you've signed. Can you share briefly with me some of those? Sure, you know, one of the bills this past session uh, is about uh, um, banning um, sunscreens that have uh, bad chemicals for our coral reefs. Yeah. You know, we've been committed to protecting our environment, and you know, we know that our environment is the foundation of our economy, uh, and if we lose it, then we lose it forever. And I'm proud to sign uh, uh, laws that, um, common sense gun laws, um, banning bump stocks and, and trigger modifications. Uh, you know, I'm proud that Hawaii is the best example of common sense gun laws keeping our community safe. You know, we have amongst the lowest gun violence uh, per capita in the country. Uh, you know, we uh, also took action to protect uh, health insurance and ensuring that uh, we have access to quality uh, health care. Uh, for all of our people. So, you know, it has been a very productive session. You know, the best ideas always come to the forefront. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that uh, we're uh, involved and engaged in shaping the legislation. Most importantly, again, showing that Hawaii can lead the country in so many important areas. That, that's great to hear. I mean, those are all so important things. Now, um, let's talk about the missile false alarm. Now, when I'm talking with a lot of different people in a variety of circles, they all tell me that the false missile alarm is the fault of two people. One was the guy that actually pressed the button, and the second was the head of the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, um, who is in charge of that person. Um, and so that, that's what they're saying, is that that's actually the fault of those two people. You're in charge of thousands of, and thousands of people, but you don't want to micromanage you know, all of your leaders in their department. You want to trust them to really look into you know, the, every situation, the cause, the effects, the effects of, off of the effects, right. so that 
you know, a, a situation that could happen doesn't. And if it does, it's responded in, in, a, in a good way. You know, the false alert was really uh, a time where um, everyone in Hawaii was terrorized for a moment. But, you know, we have been open and transparent in our looking at that. Uh, we have new leadership uh, at uh, Hawaii Emergency Management, you know, and we are committed uh, to ensure that the health and safety uh, of the public is uh, monitored, uh, and we alert uh, the public uh, whenever there is a concern, you know, 24 hours a day, 365 days out of the year. Great. I want to ask you about homelessness. Um, a lot of people seem to forget that you know, Hawaii is not the only state that has a homeless issue. The homeless issue is nationwide in every single state. W what are you doing to improve this issue? You know, a couple things, you know, it really is about working together, um, county government, state government, uh, federal government, uh, and the private sector really uh, working together to take on the challenge of homelessness. No one can do it by themselves, you know, and I'm proud of our record. Uh, for two consecutive years, the total count of homelessness statewide has decreased, and that has, has been a long time coming. It's never happened in many, many years. Uh, and it really is about leveraging each other. You know, we have terrific partnerships uh, working with the county of uh, Honolulu with on uh, Hale Ma Maoli Ola, where um, we provided state land and we have a transition center uh, that has been successful in moving homeless individuals into permanent uh, supportive housing in less than 90 days. You know, it's those kinds of real tangible projects that uh, lead us to uh, reducing homelessness. We have been focused on making the system work. You know, it's about continuous process improvement, but, you know, we are able today to place uh, more than 400 individuals, take them from homeless, and put them into permanent housing uh, each and every month. And those efforts are reducing the total numbers of homelessness statewide. Well, it seems to me that you're on the right track to improving a very difficult, complex issue. Um, I want to also get an update from you about the natural disasters that we've had, the, the Kauai flooding, which affected the residents of Kauai and some residents on East Honolulu, and the volcano situation on the Big Island. What can you update our viewers with? You know, certainly we, uh, you know, we do have uh, new management and leadership at Hawaii Emergency Management, and we have been very proactive in responding uh, to the challenges uh, in the North Shore of Kauai, you know, in uh, Hyena and Wainiha, uh, as well, well as uh, other parts of Kauai and East Honolulu. Uh, it has been a focused, uh, com combined effort of federal, state, and county uh, emergency responders. Uh, you know, we have a huge contingent from uh, FEMA uh, that is on the ground. Uh, we have gotten individual assistance for all of those communities, uh, and we are working with uh, professionals from FEMA to make sure that our residents get uh, access to support and transition services that they would not be able to um, benefit from uh, otherwise. You know, and on uh, Hawaii Island, you know, as you know, um, the eruption continues today. Yes. Uh, Fisher 8 continues to pump out lava, and the big island is getting even bigger. Um, we have been, I have been working with Mayor Kim and um, FEMA, uh, really looking and talking with the community about the future. You know, we are taking care of their n immediate needs. You know, we've worked with the private sector. We've constructed more than 20 uh, tiny houses so that they have some privacy and we can help them with their immediate needs. We are talking uh, about the long term. Um, uh, thinking about where the, we can create a new community uh, for those who have lost their homes and been impacted. 
uh, we are working with the farmers and agriculture industry, identifying both county, state, and private lands that might be suitable for farmers, you know, papaya farmers, orchid farmers. Um, many farmers in the area have been impacted, uh, and seeing how we can make private, state, or county lands available so they can relocate their farms and be back in production. You know, we are uh, creating a vision uh, for a new community that can help recover from the losses, but I think more importantly, uh, can focus people's uh, energy on a better and brighter future. That's great, and that it's such a devastating situation for all of those families that's affected by it. And I wanna ask you, Governor, about the economy. Our Hawaii economy is doing incredible right now, and like you touched on earlier, we have the uh, lowest unemployment rate at 2.1%. What are your thoughts? You know, it's a couple of things. We were really focused uh, right after the economic uh, downturn and recession, really focused on helping the visitor industry. As you know, it's um, the fundamental, the most important industry in our economy. Uh, and part of that was diversifying, trying to get visitors to the neighbor islands. You know, we reopened Ellison Onizuka uh, Kona International Airport for international flights. Awesome. You know, Hawaiian Airlines made direct flights uh, from Japan to. Uh, Kona, and that has really uh, improved the economy on Hawaii Island. Of arrivals are up 15%. That's and big. more importantly, spending on the island is up more than $300 million, which creates jobs uh, for everyone. That's very significant. Yes. Extremely significant. Absolutely. Well, Governor, you have been doing some incredible things over these years as governor, and you've been involved in the legislature for a long time yeah. um, and have been very successful. I, I really appreciate you taking time in your schedule to be here to really share these insights, you know, with our viewers. Really want to thank you about your, your great leadership. Thank you so much for having me on the program. I enjoyed the time and really uh, look forward to maybe the next episode so sure. we can talk more. Definitely. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Rusty Komori, encouraging you to constantly strive for excellence every day. Outdo what you have done and find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.